Beginning in the 17th century, when Gottfried Leibniz looked into recursive self-similarity and noted the first use of the term fractional exponents, few wanted to approach these mathematical abominations, and most work faded into obscurity until the next development occurred nearly 200 years later by Karl Weierstrass. He presented the first definition of a function that was continuous everywhere, but not differentiable anywhere. Unbeknownst to him, the graph would be considered today as a fractal. In the last few years of the 19th century, Felix Klein and Henry Poincaré introduced a category known as self-inverse fractals. Further examples of fractals would be created, including well-known examples such as the Koch snowflake and the Sierpinski triangle. The most important development in the field of fractals would be the expansion of the definition of dimension and allowing non-integer dimensions. The field was stunted by the ability of mathematicians to fully realize the nature of their sets, but all these years of development were solidified in 1975 when Mandelbrot summed it all up into the term of fractal. Fractals are used extensively, and not just in math. One could even argue that everything in the world could be related to fractals. The chaotic and irregular patterns that permeate our world can often be related to fractals. The branching of trachea, leaves on trees, or even the veins you can see in your hand. One of the most important uses of fractals is with regards to image compressing. A pretty controversial process. It takes an image and expresses it in an, into an iterated system of functions. This image is displayed quickly and is expressed in detail in any magnification. They can also be used in biological studies to model the growth of bacteria. Enzymes exhibit fractal properties that can be applied to creation, the fractal pattern of neurons, or even the study of pattern of situations such as nerve dendrites. Fractals can also be used in astronomy. Years ago, a new approach for the study of galaxies was suggested based on the concepts and methods of modern statistical physics. This led to the surprising result that galaxy correlations are fractal and not homogeneous up to the limits of the available catalogs. Fractals have an even wider range of uses than can be determined now. Currently, they are used in telecommunications, the study of fluid mechanics, computer science, to model surface physics, and they